Hi, I'm George, and we're going to be giving this portrait here a nice Halloween style background like that, just changing it to a photo background. If you want to work along with these same images that I'm using, I have a download link for that in the description. You'll see that very quickly there at the top of the description. Also, make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any future Photoshop Elements videos. Look, okay, we'll start off with a new file. Let's get this out of the way. I'm not going to even bother saving that. So I have this file here, and I also have the picture with the girl in it. That's right here. So I have these two pictures. And we'll put both of these into a default Photoshop Elements size image. Go up here to File, come down to New, and Blank File. And it's set right here at the default Photoshop Elements size. And that's 6 by 4 with a resolution of 300. Choose OK. There it is. Now I have these as floating documents, just making it easier for this project. If you don't have that set up, Go up here to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General right here, and just make sure that this checkbox is checked. It's off by default. Make sure you check that. Allow floating documents in Export Mode, and you'll be all set to go. You can also then dock these. I'll just go like that and just dock that image. There it is. Okay, let's now bring our two images in. I'll first go over to this one. The nice thing about floating windows is all you have to do is just grab the background layer and drag it into your new file like that, and it's all set to go. Close that one down. Do the same thing with this image here drag that in there we go and close that down look we have three layers background layer. we can just ignore that we have our two other layers in here i'll hide the foreground layer and this will be our new photo background i'm just going to move this in so it kind of fits nicely in here somewhere like that's pretty good notice that the image is a little bit larger than our working area that's fine gives us a little flexibility on that but i think somewhere in here is pretty good kind of like right over there i think look let's now go up here to this image what we need to do here is we need to remove the background from this photo, which will then let us see that new background in behind. Okay, for that I'm going to zoom in a bit, just like that, just a little bit, and let's grab our selection tool. Now I'm using the polygonal lasso tool, which is right down here. I have my feathering set at one pixel, and it's set for a new selection right here. The reason I like this tool is that it's really easy to use and flick with the mouse, it won't automatically close down the selection. I'll start up here. The way this works is you simply click like this and place points and then Photoshop Elements fills those points in or connects those points with a line and that gives you your nice outline. If you get down towards the bottom like right down here, just hold the space bar down. You can then push the image around with that little hand. There it is. And then come back in and place in more dots. Now I'm coming in fairly close, but not really super, super close on this. So it's very easy to do this. Make sure it's kind of work right around the hair. Don't worry about your little thin wispy things. Now the more separation you have from the background to the foreground, the better this will work. Some spots like right in here are a little bit tricky, but we'll work around that. That should be okay. And you go right back to the beginning, and there's our basic selection. We can now set this back to fit on screen right there, and then back to our selection tool. And come down here where it says Refine Edge. Click on that. In here, I'll set up Smart Radius. I'll set this pixel at one, which should be just fine for this. Leave everything else alone. And then come in here, you can see there's the brush right there. That's the brush size. If you want to change your brush size, it's down here, bottom left-hand corner. And simply brush right over that area there between that red and your subject. Now, I use this red mat that's over here where it says View. It's just the easiest one to use. You can still see your background, but it's easy to see where the mask is going to be. So I tend to use that one most of the time. Okay, we'll just continue right around here and work around the whole figure. Now, take your time when you're making these selections and take your time when you're doing this step. This is the most important of the whole process. We're clear around. Everything else goes very fast. So, again, just take your time and do a good job, and it should turn out very well for you. Welcome back. We're going to do a little bit of cleanup on this once we get this mask finished. Now, if I'm seeing anything through the hair, I'll take a little bit further in on that area, and that should work out pretty well. Okay, and just continue to work around like that. Go a little bit right in here. And we'll come right down to the finish of this. And then we'll come back and we'll then make our layer mask out of this. Notice how this will work around the hair right in there. Okay, last little bits right down in through here. And that then will finish off that part of this. Now, come down here where it says Output 2 and change this to New Layer with Layer Mask. Choose OK. There you go. That does a couple of things for us. First, it gives us our new background that also protects the original image right down here. So we have a safety, which is that layer two. Okay, now it's a little bit soft on the edges in here. We can fix these edges up pretty easily. Go over here to the layer mask side. If you don't see the light blue outline, just double click and you'll see that. Now to clean up that edge, go over here to this tool. This is the burn tool. You might be seeing the sponge up here like that or possibly the dodge tool. So come down here and choose the burn tool. 
I have mine set for mid-tones. You can adjust your brush size right down here. I'll bring it up just a bit. That's a good size. And right in these areas here where you're seeing a little bit of fuzziness, just brush over that. And what that does is it makes the layer mask blacker at that point so you can clean up that edge very easily. Anything which is just kind of fuzzy, it'll clean up those little fuzzy spots very nicely. So it's a real good tool for doing this kind of a cleanup. And just go around the whole figure this way and catch all those little edges. And that should then give you a really nice edge in there. We'll then come back and adjust the color and values as our last step. Okay, edge looks good. Now, obviously, she's kind of washed out, as you can see, and she's not orange enough to match the picture. Let's take care of that coloration first. Go up to Layer, come down here to New Adjustment Layer, and choose Photo Filter, where it says Use Previous Layer. Check that. Choose OK. Now, the default one is the warming filter, and that's what you want. So move these slider here towards the right until you get enough orange in there so it matches that background color. I think somewhere around 59 60% looks pretty good for this particular image. Your number here will change depending upon what coloration your original image is. But for this, that's a nice value. Now she's a little washed out in here. Let's fix that. Back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels in here. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. Now she's low on the blacks. So that's your left hand side. Take that slider control and move that in towards the right and that will darken down the darks and bring it down so that the values match the background and it makes a good match like that. I think right around here is pretty good on that. And there we go. We've now changed that background to a fun Halloween background picture. Now if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. You can get my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.